Good evening, everybody. Just wanted to uh, take a moment to talk about the format we'll use going forward to describe the setup and then what we'll do for each turn. Essentially, what we'll do for this particular video is we'll discuss the scenario setup, what's involved with setting up your scenario, what the different parts of the card mean. Let me just change the size of that. That'll fit. Then we'll talk about how we will record the turns going forward so first this video then will be the scenario setup we'll talk about how to prepare the map how we'll place the units then for the turns what we'll do is after I place the Russians because they place first I'll wait about a day and then I'll record another video where we'll do the German setup and what I'm hoping is for those who do turn in during that initial time that free day if you will that one or two days between posting if you have any comments about the Russian setup I can discuss that come back make changes then when I do the German placement I'll do the same thing I'll place them on the board and then wait a day or two and then based on any feedback I get if any then you know I can make adjustments and then we'll play the game then <clears throat> we'll play out a turn so I'll do a turn move all the units fight the combat then I'll wait another day or two that way if there's any comments questions about rules rules clarifications things I've messed up or if there's any suggestions you know like well I should move these guys north or have this go south that way then you can participate a little bit that way too so I'm hoping to make this kind of an interactive thing which I think it'll be fun so well at least fun for me now let's do the scenario setup so we'll talk about the parts of the scenario card and then we'll put the Russians onto the board and we'll call it good so first of the scenario we're playing is crossroads it's August 4th 1942 the Germans finally had a tank to match up against the T-34, it was the Panzer 4F2. In this scenario, the two tanks meet on the battlefield when the Germans attempt to secure a crossroads. Awesome. So, first thing we're going to do is take a look here at the map. This is map 1, and it says our map coordinates are B12, B26, X12, and X26. So to represent that on the map, because the map, like if I just close this for a moment, you'll see is huge and because I have it zoomed out you can't read the numbers and letters but if I zoom in I zoom too far uh, you'll see we start all the way over here with A15 and it comes all the way across to 0015 so this map and then it's also pretty deep too so we go all the way to 1 and come all the way down to 28 so to help us identify what section of the map that we're playing on up here in the markers we have map edges so I'm gonna open up this scenario for just a moment what I'm gonna do is drag over four map edges I should have saved the scenario set up this way that way they're already over here and I'm gonna put a control marker which I have down here boop kind of a neutral that way I can place these on the map as I find the numbers. So we're going to start with B26 since I'm down here. I'm going to put one map edge. Boop. And we're going to scroll up until we find B12. Boop. So now when the map says like you place along the map edge, I'll just place them along this row here which is now our new map edge. Now we got to find X. So let's scroll over. We now have X. So same thing. I'm going to find X12, boop, and come down and do X26, which is boop in that woods. So there's our boundaries. <coughs> the scenario doesn't mention any rule. We'll talk about the rules, but there's no rules about leaving the map. So if you leave the map, the unit's eliminated. So we're gonna. That's where we're gonna play. In fact, let's just take a moment to look. Let me close those markers. Just get rid of that text for a moment let's zoom out let's do a fit width so here 
of that giant map this is the section that we'll be playing in today oh I forgot to place the crossroads in the crossroads scenario it says V18 which is right here if I zoom in yeah V18 you might not be able to read that but that is V18 so we'll find our control marker put here let's just close that map out real fast we'll zoom out again so there it is that's the crossroads the Germans are gonna get to the Germans will come in from the west the Russians are gonna place on the east and we're gonna try and push through to take that I put that as neutral I probably could have put a Russian control since it is in Russian territory essentially uh, I'll just leave that neutral but if the Germans take it, we'll turn that to a uh, German side. Well, let's see. Let's read the scenario card and see if that matters. So let's pull up the scenario again. So now that we've placed the map, I, oh, turns. Oh, turn markers. Now let's do the turn markers real quick. That's next on the scenario card. Let's not forget those. So uh, 12 turns. We're going to put a marker here on the 10 and then I marked it here on the two boom 12 turns <coughs> alright now let's talk about some special rules here it says Russian player sets up first so we will set them up here in just a moment after we finish reading the rules units that have not entered by the end of their initial turn are placed on the entry map edges and considered in play next turn units that have not entered by the end of their initial turn Oh, so as I place my Germans here along their map edge, if my impulse point roll is low, I'm not going to move them into the play area. Just want to make sure I understand that fully before we move on. And the only reason why that kind of caught me off first is because the Russian player, they set up on the map already in play. It's the German player that doesn't necessarily start with everything in play. All right, so the next special rule, with each reinforcement, the owning player receives an additional impulse. So we'll take a look at that here in the setup. Then, off-board assets, the German player has one artillery strike available for the game. I'll have to remember that. I probably will forget that. <laughs> but I want to remember that. Uh, the Russian rolls for one airstrike beginning on turn 8. A 5 or 6 must be rolled, and if successful, the strike must be used on that turn. Russian may pass roll attempt on any given turn. So that's one for the entire game, not one per turn after turn eight. That's just right there. If I don't use it on turn eight, then I have to remember, you know, turn seven, six, five. I want to use it at least once before the game ends. It's just a matter of remembering that special rule because when I play, nine out of ten times that card will be closed. So the control hex is worth five victory points at game end, total victory and casualty points. So the way the game works, every unit you kill is going to give a victory point. If you kill a tank and the crew, that's two victory points. If you kill the tank but the crew escapes, that's one victory point. So keeping track exactly who dies is important. And then whoever takes this hex will get five victory points. So I will put it neutral. Uh, the Russian player, if he wants, I could start with someone deployed on it. I might even put a cover here. Boop. And I might. Boop. <laughs> I'll just put a rifle squad right in there on that defense. And now we own it. So I'll zoom in. And what we can do here. Yeah. Let's see. Let's just for a moment. I, I am going to do that. Let's do that. <laughs> And I'm going to turn that into a Russian control. We're just going to take that crossroad. I was going to say, maybe I don't have a Russian control, but I do. So now we own it. And I'll put that on the bottom. And I'll put him there. And boom. Thank you, scenario card. And boom. We now own the crossroads with a plus one to our defense. Sweet. Dug in. So I'll automatically. So if nothing else, the Russians have five victory points 
if nothing in the game happens. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the scenario card. Uh, very important thing it says here with your reinforcements you earn one extra impulse die. So just quickly the impulse dice and the gut check a great way to differentiate the differences between morale and skill of the two opposing armies. Generally it's considered that in the beginning of the war that German troops were better trained, better equipped, had super high morale and the Russian troops were not as experienced, weren't as well equipped. I think that maybe realistically, historically, that might not be completely accurate. Uh, Russians were, I think, at times highly motivated. You know, their, their homeland was being invaded. Were they not as skilled? It's possible. I think a lot of their leadership was pretty skilled. I know people say, well, a lot of leadership was killed in the purges and things, and so the Russian army was learning a new, you know, everything was new. I think probably what it was is like every other person that ran into the Germans, the Blitzkrieg was a new experience for them, that style of warfare. I think up to that point, they were as worthy as any army on the field at the time. Uh, you, you know, you look at the French and, and you say, well, they were kind of swept aside. Well, not, not really. They, they put up a really good fight. They had a huge army. They had what's believed to be more advanced tanks than what the Germans had. It was just because of this new warfare that the Germans brought with the Blitzkrieg, I think they caught the Russians by surprise as well. So to represent that in the game, that's what the impulse dice and the gut check. Uh, one thing that is commonly known and I think agreed upon was lack of communications with the Russians and that could be really well represented in the impulse dice. The Germans had tanks with radio units and the Russians were still using like flags to communicate. So the impulse dice represent kind of that command and control, how well supplied you are. And what that means is for Germans here, I roll three die six. That gives me a grand total possible 18 impulse points to spend. Every unit can spend up to two impulse points to perform actions, such as move and move, or move and shoot. And that, like for here, I have four German tanks. That would be eight impulse. Uh, I have four rifle units. So that would be another eight. <clears throat> If I rolled 18 impulse points, then have an additional tank. So I could move like all my tanks, all my infantry on a turn, but I would leave out the captain and the sergeant, so I'll probably attach them to squad. So on a good roll, everything on the German side could move and shoot, but that's the maximum roll. That represents their ability to communicate effectively. Now the Russian player, on the other hand, starts with two impulse dice. And he's got three tanks, so that would use six impulse points. And then he has five rifle. So really, if he moved his three tanks and his ten, that's 16 impulse points to perform all the actions for those folks. He's not going to get that on two impulse dice. And that represents their inability to communicate effectively on the battlefield. And it could, could include some of that inexperience because it is believed that the, the Germans sent over highly trained units some of them had experience from the Blitzkrieg, whereas the, the Russians are kind of in that rebuilding. And they're, I, th I think this kind of reflects that inexperience a little bit better. Now, that being said, though, when you get your reinforcements, it says they're going to get an extra impulse die. Now, for the Germans, that's awesome because they are bringing in some more units. And that means I'll be rolling four dice for the Germans. That's going to be a lot of impulse points they can spread around. Now, with the German or the Russians, he'll get another impulse. That's three dice. He's still going to be behind the impulse power curve. But it will help. It will help a lot. Now, just because you can do two actions with something, if, if I only roll, let's see if I roll two dice, six for the Russian. Yeah, if I roll, well, 11. Okay. That's awesome. I wasn't expecting that for a demo roll, but I, since I have more units with impulses that they could do things, you don't have to do two things with something. I mean, I could move everything once, for example, 
and maybe I'd have enough impulse points left that I could fire with a couple of them. So just because they can do two actions doesn't mean they have to. Because the way the game plays, as you'll see when we play, is I'll spend an impulse point for the Russian, and then the German player will get to spend an impulse point. So it goes back and forth. So I might use an impulse point and then decide, based on the unfolding action, I'm going to do something else. So this could could be a pretty good deciding factor in how these two armies play and maneuver against each other. Just that one difference in a dice. So let's continue setting up our Russian player here. So we didn't look at their setup. It says here, set up for turn 12 since you start the highest turn and work your way down. Anywhere east of the I hex row. Alright, so let's find I. I. I is right here. So in the grand scheme of things, I is right here. So I can go anywhere back. We've already placed one person on the crossroad. And here's my map edge. North edge, south edge. What I want to do is kind of funnel the German player in. So I'm going to place some stuff kind of on the flanks. And then hopefully kind of force him to work his way in towards that funnel and then kind of get him crossway. Who knows how we'll set up. But that's kind of going to be my initial thought. So like I'm going to look at my tanks. So I'm going to place a tank up here behind the stoneworks which is very close to the northern map edge. And the way he's facing that red triangle here I'm actually going to rotate him. The tank has a 360 degree arc of fire, but I want the forward armor facing the west side of the map as much as possible because that's where the German player is coming from. Now if I come down to the south, here's another stone wall, but it's more, looks like it's more for people that are going this direction. So I don't know if I want to put a tank necessarily in there. And if I place it here, folks will be coming, and that doesn't offer protection. So let's actually put a tank unit here behind that, that hedge wall. <clears throat> so I'm going to rotate him, too, kind of for the same reason, just to keep the front <coughs> as much as possible towards people coming in. And... Let's see, since I is like right here, I'm going to put another, I, see if I put a tank here, it's got this kind of wall section, it just looks weird. So we got a little bit of a wall here, it's not much of a funnel is it? Uh, let's do this, let's put one of these tanks back here, near the crossroad, and we'll rotate it. So now as people come in, they can start getting shot at. And as they push in, we can defend. Okay. Now, the gun I want to place, that's an anti-tank gun I got right there. I want to give him... Now, see, they don't have a designated fire arc, so he can pretty much shoot anywhere. And we're going to place him in a tree line. What's his range? Let's zoom in on that. 16. That's awesome. 16 is really good. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's, I think that'll be a good placement. That gives him a really good range. The problem is, we'll have to see what kind of hindrance the terrain gives. And if I move from, you know, from behind trees, it blocks some line of sight, but right there, I mean, that's an awesome command of the battlefield out to potentially here. So good. We'll leave him there. Now, the heavy machine gun, because we know that the Germans have some infantry coming in. I don't want to leave the machine gun too far back. Now, its range is a 10, so not as good... Uh, 
you know, and I don't want the tanks just to sweep aside. And since we're here to protect the crossroad, but I want the machine gun to work. So what we'll do is let's put a machine gun up here in this set of buildings up here. So they're not too far forward, but you know, that's gonna make up some lack of I think that's good, you know, ten hexes will still put them out out in here. That's not too bad. We'll leave that there. Plus he's protected. Now I am gonna put the commander with the rifle team. Just my my thinking is as they come under fire, I can move the captain, but if anybody assaults the gun team, he'll offer a bonus to close combat. If I need to, I can move the captain to one of these squads. But for now, I think that's where I'm going to place him up there. All right, now for the defenders here, I'm going to put here in the building. I'm going to put down here in a building. And this is almost like a natural trench line. So as long as they stay behind, that gives them a little bit of protection from incoming fire, which adds like a plus one to their defense through that hex. Let's see if it says over here, that's a bridge. Uh, doesn't look like they put a hedge up here as an example. Oh, hedge. Defense one. So gives them a little bit of a defensive bonus and again we can move them as the Germans come alright that is all of the Russians for that first turn so let me just close the scenario this is about what the initial setup is going to look like so we'll save that let's get rid of the markers so there's the north and south oh placed them too far back. Oh, you know what? I think I put those in the wrong spot. Oh, you know what? <laughs> when I talked about the crossroad, I put them in the wrong crossroad. Oh, snap. Don't tell anybody. Okay, fixed. <laughs> I was like, why does that not look right? It's a crossroad. Oh, wrong crossroad. So there we have the control point, the cover, the rifle, and it's in the correct crossroads. Okay, now this makes more sense. All right, there we go. This is our initial Russian defense. So again, my thought was as we bring the Germans in, if I come north, I had to, you know, reposition if we decide to deploy completely in the north or completely in the south. I was thinking they're just going to come through the middle and then maybe that kind of funnels them a little bit towards the middle kind of get shot from both sides but we can adjust that if you guys don't think that's very good so just imagine the Germans are going to be along here at some point but we'll talk about the German placement next time so for now just let me know what you think if you're happy with that if you want me to make some changes to the initial deployment let me know and uh, we'll get to you in a couple of days thanks for watching bye